much, Arnon. Just wanted to say that your work reminded us of the challenges and thrills of the pride in being read and reviving your memories of the old amongst the stars. Thank you very much. Um, I'd just like to let you guys know about the, uh, the other reading that is going to be occurring tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. at the Nickel Arts Museum at the University of Calgary. And reading tomorrow will be Lee Miracle, Marilyn Dumont, Gregory Schofield, Sharon Pearl Turner, Chor Emery Twig, and Jolene Calliou. Uh, Troy and Jolene are local artists, and Troy will be doing performance art, and Jolene will be doing poetry. So we hope to see you all out at that. Our next author is Louise Bernice Half. Louise Bernice Half, whose Cree name is Sky Dancer, was raised on the Saddle Lake First Nations Reserve in northern Alberta went to Blue Quills Residential School for a period of six years. She is the author of three collections of poetry published by Coteau Books, Bare Bones and Feathers, Blue Marrow, and The Crooked Good. She is a survivor of the Blue Quills Residential School in St. Paul, Alberta, and is Saskatchewan's Poet Laureate for 2005 and 2006. Please welcome Miss Louise Bernice Hath. Indian friends say it's good, but some of them say you sorry don't walk, so I was sitting here thinking that we may be talk. Say I always want to tell you to stay out of my business. If me wants to talk to trees and build nest in house, that's up to me. If me wants to pitch my tent and feed the ghost panic and berries and maybe throw some Indian popcorn for you, Jesus, that's up to me. I don't ask for forgiveness, not one hand Mary's, or a step ladder to heaven. Me is happy with the sky, the bird Inuak, four decked Inuak. I is happy. Sore means I don't need you church and you priest telling me what to do. Sore means that I'm free to talk to Manitou, the spirits and plant Inuak. Maybe we talk again next time I see you in the newspaper. In the outhouse. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm always uh, responding to history and what they say about us, and I started thinking about uh, the priests and what they what they came out here and what baggage they brought. So I don't know if this is a priest or a nun or a monk or something, but um, one of the um, traditional storytellers in Mohawk country said. Um, 
uh, you know, uh, those, those people were already abusing our kids. Our girls were coming home pregnant, our boys were sore. And um, so I responded to um, this Saint Marie amongst the Hurons, where they, they, they think they've been martyrs, these people. And I wanted to hear their voices. So this priest, he writes home or whatever. Father, these robes I wear confuse me. I have forgotten who I am. A monk, a Jesuit, a brother, a priest, perhaps. Uh, a nun, perhaps. It matters not. I have sinned. My last confession was in 1492. Yesterday. Ah, oh, yes. Late yesterday. I wrote his eminence, offered my life to save savage souls. My mother kissed my crucifix, said, God go with you. I am filled with wind, empty forest. Savages peep beneath my robe. Tender hands send heat up my spine, I bless them. This whip doesn't bite hard enough, mother. I crouch under the shrub, cross shroud my face, swallow, swallow, swallow. This salt water I trickle, send the Father's Bible thundering, God be with you. These savage men, they laugh at my disdain of their brown-breasted woman. I grind the crucifix, dry myself. God be with me. And according to my research, and because I have uh, inklings to be a womanist, uh, I believe that it was the Aboriginal woman in this country who saved, the, who, who went underground, and uh, I know it was in my case with my grandmothers, uh, with the ceremonies. And so they respond. There are holy Iskogno Sims all over. We were the ones who burned down the Jesuit church, trilled, danced, and laughed through the night. We watched those cabins eaten by our flames. We were the ones, new Sims, who hid the bundles, told counsel when we learned how those brothers lifted their skirts to spill their devils into our son's night. And did they think they suffered as they burned, screaming against our flame? So that's from uh, Bear Bones and Feather, or Blue Marrow, and these are my maternal grandmothers. The Crooked Good came out last year, and it's based on a legend that I appropriated from my parents, who appropriated from their parent, her parent, their parents, and the grandparents before us. It's a very old legend, and I've made it my own because I grew up with it. So it's about uh, the rolling head in, in Saskatchewan. They say, Gigi Bistagon which is uh, the cut-off head. In Alberta, we say Titi Bistogon, which means the rolling head. So there's little differences, and I just chose to go with the way Saskatchewan Indians speak Cree up there. Um, but, um, but I've woven this uh, rolling head story into the lives of three Aboriginal contemporary women, and there's many voices. And the narrator, her name is Egwiski, which means a woman who has made her life a turnaround. And the mother's name is Gone for Good, which means um, a spin. I call her Gone for Good. And there's uh, two other voices. And I'm really cognizant of the time, so Greg, don't, let me know, please. When I was growing up in a bush on a hillside, I watched the sun arrive from the dark, watched her slip into the dark. I traveled. I didn't know the world back then. I just traveled. I was afraid I would never return. I tumbled that hillside back into myself. You can tell me after you hear this story if my name suits me. I've yet to figure it out. In Rip Woman, stories are born. The old man called it psychology. Me, I just dream it. These mysterious, gifted, mis these gifted, mysterious people of long ago, my mother, a spin, gone for good, would say. They never died. They are scattered here, there, everywhere, somewhere. They know the language, the sleep, the dream, the laws, these singers, these healers, at the Yuganak, these ancient story keepers. I, turn around, am not one of them. I was taught by old people, an Indian man, a white man, an Indian woman, a white woman. They worked in lairs in the full veins of rib woman. I sat in their thicket wailing. The old ones navigated through my dreams. 
Sometimes they dragged, scolded, cajoled, cheered, and celebrated. I wanted to be with them, like them. I am not a saint. I am a crooked good. My cousin said I was easy, therefore I've never been a maiden. I am 70, but still I carry my sins. Brothers-in-law I meet for the first time wipe their hands as if I am still among the maggots. I didn't know their woman wept when their men slept in my bed. I am not a saint. I married Abel, a wide green-eyed man, 50 years now. Inside rib woman I shook hands with promise, promise never forgot, trailed me year after year. His big heavens a morning lake drowns me in my lair. I learned how to build rib woman, one willow at a time, one skin at a time. I am only half done. This is part of the story. I, Egwiski, am a dreamer. I dream awake, asleep on paper. The old man said the universe, the day, was the story. So every day I am born. The old white man taught me to unfold night visits. The old woman taught me all of it was real. The old white woman helped me to cry with the thunder. Have I told you where I grew up? On a knoll in a clearing, a small reserve called Witekusagegan. There they burned the flesh eater on ice. That is another story. We were divided by a creek, many hills, cabins ruled by men. A spin and a rest of the wives kept woman, even Nukumak. We competed with one another, stole, shunned one another, everyday events. We were all saints. And I, I just want to read you um, um, something else that the Jesuits said about our people. And this whole text is about responding and saying, Oh, fuck you, guys. Um, but uh, uh, <clears throat> because they say, um, I'd like to retaliate against what we've been taught, like uh, the Aboriginal dream is not supposed to be a good thing. They dream about the devil, you know. And, uh, and I said, well, Carl Jung did some pretty strange things, didn't he? Anyway, Father Francis du Poisson, and April 27th, 1639, he writes, All their actions, my savages, are dictated to them directly by the devil who speaks to them now in the form of a crow or some similar bird, now in the form of a flame or a ghost, and all this in dreams. They consider the dream the master of their lives. It is the god of the country. It is which this which dictates them their feasts their hunting, their fishing, their war, their trade with the French, their remedies, their dances, their games, their stories, their loves to cure a sick person. They summoned the sorcerer, who, with acquainting himself with the disease of the patient, sings and shakes his tortoise shell. He gazes into the water and sometimes into the fire to discover the nature of the disease. Seems to me Jesus did that too. They believed in immortality of the soul, which they believed to be corporal. They make no mention either of punishment or reward in the places which souls go after death. And so they do not make any distinction between the good and the bad, the virtues and the vicious, and they honor equally the interment of both. And so a spin gone for good. Three person, Maganik Wapanai Egwerski, lived, shared a story, sang into the dark. How's my time? Indian time. Indian time. <laughs> um, three person is the, one of the other characters. Three person married Mathegan. Mathegan is the one you use for scraping the hide. That's, that's his name. He was a caveman that danced like Karen Kane. Dragged three persons, scraped and gouged her head, left wild, wild white islands beneath her hair. He gave her 1,500 chants and hymns. She begged at the foot of Mary, starved at the foothills of Grandfather Stone. Three persons clawed when she petted you, still giggle dro dro dropped out of her eyes now and then. Giggle held her sides and rolled all over the floor when she told me this story. 
I was breastfeeding in a public area, minding my own business. When a white lady asked me to go to the lavatory, I didn't know what that lavatory meant. When she told me, I looked at her and told her, tonight, go eat your supper in the shithouse. <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. So <laughs>